my hair's a mess and so I have my hat that I'm gonna wear to talk through this. Um, I'm here on campus right now because I need to make copies. So I just printed the safety contract. I need a safety contract in English and Spanish for my advanced chemistry class. And then I'm also doing a dual enrollment course. And that is a college level course that's a little bit different. So they have their own safety contract that I printed out. So I need to go make copies of that. Um, my room is pretty much set up. I don't think, I mean, there have been some changes. Like I took all the like decorations down and I needed to put stuff up there to store um, just because I'm running out of space. Um, and I've just been teaching a lot and I'm trying to use the cabinet space for instructional materials. And so other than that, my room hasn't really changed. I'm gonna just do a quick twirl, circle around. Um, hasn't changed too much. Uh, maybe the desk, the tables, um, the way that they're organized. So I also apologize in advance. So my vlogs this year are probably going to just jump. I'm gonna record when I can. Um, and so things may or may not make sense because I just don't have time to sit and plan out a storyline and do all that vlogging stuff. I just don't have time. Um, and so if I'm gonna to commit to this, uh, this school year, I wanna make sure that I have time professionally, but also personally, and then time to vlog and not have a bunch of clips that I need to rewatch um, and then edit together because I do want to enjoy my time outside of teaching life. So I just needed to say that before I forgot. So quick update, I'm not going to be stapling that. I have a friend who's actually throwing a pool party in an hour who has volunteered to come help me so that way I can, and that's probably him uh, messaging me, um, so that way I can participate in this pool party. So I'm like, come help me. So the main thing that I was struggling about, um, stressed about was what I was going to do the first week of school, particularly the first day of school. Last year, what I did was um, one of our classroom policies and procedures. I did uh, a get to know you survey. And then the students answered this question, like, what does it mean? What makes a student an advanced, what makes an advanced student successful? Something along those lines. And each student wrote down their thoughts. And then in their groups of four, they passed their paper in a clockwise direction. Each student read the previous um, response and then they responded. I agree because, I disagree because, um, and then they pass their papers back around until each person got their original paper back. And then what I have them do is on chart paper, come to a consensus and write some information on that chart paper and then they present it out to the class. And I had those posters like posted up throughout the school year so that way I could remind my advanced students like, hey, this is what you all said. Like I went around, we all went, went around and presented and most if not all of you have like the same similar idea and so that was what i was able to use to hold my advanced students accountable anytime like they were falling behind or they weren't bringing the materials i'm like wait a minute this is where you participated in this little activity and i clearly remember you presenting or you talking with your group members and this is what you said however this year i'm thinking about doing a jigsaw mainly because i have like mixed thoughts on jigsawing myself when i have to do them in pd but mainly because um our evaluation instructional practices rubric has that on there. Also my district, and this is a long story, but um, we're undergoing a series of mandated special education trainings through the Texas Education Agency and um, the MTSS, multi-tier systems of support, has jigsawing on there. And so I know that's something that our instructional leaders are gonna ask, are you doing jigsawing, so on and so forth. And so I figured this would be an easy way um, in terms of classroom policies and procedures, an easy way to introduce jigsaws in case students have never done jigsaw before. Um, so for example, I might number them off. If you're a number one, all the number ones go to this table and you're responsible for reading uh, the cell phone policy. You get the information on cell phone policy and then you come back to your original group and you share with your group the cell phone policy because they didn't read that particular station or that concept. And so they need to get that information from you. But I just need to work on something so that way on Monday, if I need to have posters made, things laminated and then set up around the room or out in the hallway, I can get that done before the first day of school. So right now I'm in the back and I am finishing up the little activity that I'm gonna have my students do. I decided what I'm going to do is have them um, in groups, um, in their assigned group, become experts on a particular policy or procedure and then that group is gonna present that policy procedure to the class instead of having them jigsaw, only because like I would only have like four topics since there's four students per group 
then that would only be four policies and procedures that each person would go back and learn something and bring back to the group versus me being able to do, because I have seven groups total in my classroom, I could do seven policies and procedures and I can get that out the way. Um, once each group presents out to the class, I can also, at that point, if they forget something or I just need to add a little more explanation, I can uh, talk after they present. So I'm actually about to finish this up and then I am going to head out.